Hey everyone, today I'll be discussing The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. This book is a story about a girl's journey into fairyland, a fantastical world filled with magical creatures such as harsh winds, wyverns, witches, werewolves, and many, many more. September, a 12-year-old girl who is bored of her current life is whisked away to fairyland by the green wind, a figure who enjoys transporting cherry-picked children to the magical world. Once there, September meets three witches and begins on a journey to retrieve a magical spoon for them that the evil Marquess of Fairyland has stolen. As she begins her quest, she meets a wyvern named A through L, afterwards nicknamed L. Together, they continue on their journey towards Pandemonium, which is the capital of Fairyland, in order to find the Marquess. Once there, the Marquess gives September the spoon and a new pair of shoes, but also threatens her into going on a journey to the faraway and dangerous Worsted Wood to retrieve a mysterious something that is inside a casket. After being forced to accept this mission, September saves a married boy named Saturday, around the same age as her, and this new squad travels toward the Worsted Wood together. After eating fairy food in the Autumn Provinces, an act she was warned never to do, September begins to turn into a tree. By the time September reaches the Worsted Wood, she has fainted and met death itself. However, September manages to outsmart death death, singing it to sleep and then using one of her growing branches to reach behind it, open the casket, and recover its contents, a wrench. Suddenly, Elle and Saturday are abducted by the Marquess's lions. After she wakes up from a coma, September finds herself in the winter province, where everything is back to normal. After locating her friends, September builds a raft and begins circumnavigating fairyland, hence the title, in order to reach them. She comes upon an island, but out of the blue, under the Marquess's command, the furniture inhabitants attack her with sharp swords and throw her off a cliff. Miraculously, September survives and escapes on her raft to the dungeon where Elle and Saturday are being held. Upon reaching the dungeon, September is surprised to see the Marquess, who asks September to uncouple the screws linking Fairyland and the human world together, using the wrench recovered from the casket. This would mean that no humans or fairies could ever journey to the other world ever again. September is also shown the clocks of every human child, ticking down the time until they must return home. At this moment, while the Marquess recounts her first experience in Fairyland and how she clawed her way back, September unscrews the Marquess's clock. With a wail, she drops dead. September then saves her friends from the dungeon and uses Saturday's marriage powers to teleport them all to a safe location. September is told that because she ate fairy food, she must return to fairyland every spring, just like Persephone in Greek mythology. She also meets her future child with Saturday. At the end of the story, September returns home and finds it all back to normal. Fairyland is a middle grade fiction book because it stars a 12 year old protagonist, September, and is meant for a preteen audience. In the story, September mainly confronts her immediate external world, pausing only briefly to self reflect. Further, as middle grade readers commonly read to escape, this book truly delivers as September sets off on a spectacular journey around a magical world that is truly an escape from the boredom of her normal life. The, September also shares the concerns of the 8-12 through 12 set, as throughout the story, she mainly endeavors to reclaim justice and save her new friends. Middle grade fiction books commonly include a character development, and this book truly fits the bill. In the story, as September continues around her journey in Fairyland, she confronts many challenges and obstacles that help her make the transition from childhood to young adulthood. By the end of her adventures, it is clear that September herself has undergone a lot of growth. This makes her a perfect protagonist for a middle grade fiction book. And we're back, continuing on with our analysis of Catherine M. Valente's The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in the Ship of Her Own Making. This book utilizes simple sentence structure that is 
easy enough for preteens to understand, while also being more complex than those sentences found in chapter books. These sentences are, involve compound and complex sentences, as well as compound complex sentences, and embody rich concepts about grammar. Furthermore, the diction used is fairly straightforward, with the exception of some fairly obscure words that are used only, really, in fantasy, or high fantasy, rather, books. Valente liberally uses flowery language that would be much too difficult for the target audience. Words like flagon, demurred, comestibles, profligate, esoteric, entropy, felty, furtive, filigreed, ses, tatsumas, hori, real, and much, much more. The predominant theme of this book is the loss of childhood innocence, a phenomenon that many of the readers of the target audience, which is preteens, can relate to as they are experiencing it currently. September, the protagonist, arrives in Fairyland as a naive young girl. However, through the course of the novel, she begins to become disillusioned to the complex and oftentimes frightening real face of Fairyland, tangled up in a chaotic dictatorship. Fairyland, of course, is only an enhanced version of the human world. In the messy politics of the fantastical setting lies many parallels to current global politics. The loss of childhood innocence that September experiences helps her to open her eyes to the injustices around her, and September consequently is able to conquer the obstacles in front of her and grow as a person. This theme that Valente stresses says that childhood innocence, while a beautiful thing, is impermanent and will inevitably be lost with time. My overall impression of Fairyland the book is positive. However, I had many concerns with it. Since this book draws many parallels to other classics, such as The Phantom Tollbooth and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, it was a given that I would enjoy this book, as I enjoyed those others. I'll touch on these parallels in a second. However, the concerns that I mentioned before are actually quite valid. For example, the diction was a constant problem as even I, a person who is older than the target age range, did not understand many of the words involved. For example, I just randomly turned a page, and there are already a couple of words I don't know. For example, panacea, panoply, grow anger, brandywine, and other words that I don't understand upon first glance and may have to look up recommend this book to fans of The Phantom Tollbooth or Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, as those two books all feature similar protagonists who go on an adventure or voyage and return kind of plot, according to Booker's seven types of narrative plots, um, and they all go to travel to a fantastical land, or learning lots of things about the new land. Another series that has similar parallels is the Chronicles of Narnia series. So, fans of those books may want to check this one out. Overall, I really enjoyed this story. The plot was very intense, action-packed, and totally engaging, leading me to turn every page with anticipation. Furthermore, the character development, as discussed before, was done very well, albeit that this story featured way too many characters for me to t keep track of. So that was one drawback. On the whole, I would give this book about uh, 3.5 to 4 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching!